All right, guys, so here's the deal. Gina wanted some of those little log slices for the baby shower, and normally the best tool for this would be either be like a big bandsaw or a chainsaw. My two really junky chainsaws are super dull, are not powerful enough. So I'm trying to do some other things. I've tried a circular saw, I've tried a uh, sawzall, table saw, like all kinds of stuff. You gotta be real careful doing this kind of thing because you don't want any kickback from the tools. So what I'm gonna try to do here is I gave myself uh, a little tape line here just so I have something to go by that's semi-straight. And then uh, I'll take a circular saw and kind of go down like an inch or two and then take my sawzall and just spin and go around and get these slices cut off. This is what I end up with after that. Now you can see this is a horrible, horrible slice. But um, I go in there and cut a little bit more or uh, stick it in the table saw like this real carefully, give myself an edge, then use this grinder to, to grind this, the worst of it off. And I end up with this edge. Now it's a little bit high in the, in the center here, so I still gotta grind a little bit more. It's not perfect by any means but for uh, what we're doing should be fine I mean you can kind of get an idea of how straight that is you can still see it's kind of high right in the center of that hump there so I'll probably sand on that a little bit more so I'll build some little wood jigs that go around here like little squares and then I'll just uh, take a router like a plunge router and maybe I can get some of these edges flattened I tried to run it through this little stupid planer but the problem is the slice is too wide to fit in there, so I can't do it. I do have some smaller logs that I'm gonna cut. Maybe I can try that and see if it works. Here's the sawzall blade that I got for uh, trying to cut all the way through the log. And then you can see the circular saw. I just have it set for like two or three inches going around the edge. Okay, so you see how I have the edge cut all around the tape there? A couple inches with the circular saw. Now I'm gonna go in with this, and I'm just gonna keep turning the log, turning the log, and turning the log. And again, it's not gonna be perfect. It's still gonna have a little bit of teeth mark. Then I'll go in either with the table saw or a sander or something and smooth that over. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you can see the some of the levels. And then on this one, Gina's getting some uh, centerpieces that are a little less than perfect. I'm getting one side as smooth as I can and then I'm carefully running it through the table saw uh, just kind of spinning it which leaves the center section and carefully cut out that center section as best I can I also got this belt sander which actually doesn't work really good what's working the best for me still is this disc sander I got a couple more uh, discs I can use but I just I kind of slowly wear that center down and then I've been putting a little straight edge across to see if it's pretty flat. If I wanted to get really crazy, I could use an orbital sander with some fine sandpaper. And then I just do a light sand on the outside and blow it off so all the loose bark blows off. All right, guys, so now that I finished uh, cutting this flat edge, sanding it as smooth as I can, um, I'm going to use this edge against this fence on the table saw. And then I'm going to run it through and cut the same straight edge, hopefully on this side. Now, the only thing about doing this is, is you gotta be really, really careful because since this edge down here is not going to be a square right angle, there's a chance of kickback on this blade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly rotate this thing and kind of score an edge uh, as much as I can with this saw, slowly and carefully. And then I can just go back in with the uh, Sawzall or reciprocating saw and cut and cut the center part off. So let me show you guys kind of what I got going on here.
right, so now that I got the edge pretty much cut with the table saw, now I'm gonna go in with the reciprocating saw and I'm gonna cut that center portion out next. blade on my sawzall was so dull that I was getting impatient so I decided to go bring it over here to the miter saw and I went ahead and cut that slice off with this. I'm left with a little bit of a little blade mark here so now the next thing to do is to just take this um, this grinder here and do the best I can to kind of smooth it out being real careful not to uh, grind too much on the edges. You want this thing to be as flat as you can and because of the way that I'm doing this it's never going to be perfect. I think it's not as bad to take a little bit more in the center versus on the edge then that way this thing doesn't wobble around. I'm actually really surprised with how well this is turning out considering I didn't cut it with a bandsaw or chainsaw. I'm also happy with the thickness of it being consistent so the top is pretty level with the bottom. Here are all the little centerpiece logs. Bunch of slices. I'll take a slice of log. Whoa. After I got done grinding them, I did a light sand over them. And I think what I'm going to do is take some uh, vegetable oil or some uh, olive oil or something, virgin olive oil put it on here just to give it a coat because I know that in the past I've built like um, wood crates and stuff and we put like cupcakes the oil from the foods made little spots and stuff on there so if we just put a little bit of oil on there well it'll look like a wet look which isn't as cool but at least it'll prevent any spots from happening okay so it's been about a week since I cut all these guys and I wanted to show you how some of them have actually cracked which I was expecting um, as they were drying out to do. I'm actually kind of surprised because some of these smaller ones didn't even crack. We could have sealed these with like a natural low luster polyurethane or a food safe lacquer or you know some kind of linseed oil or something. We weren't too worried about the cracks. I kind of actually think it gives it a little bit of character. If you want to get real crazy I have seen some people fill some of these cracks with like a wood glue or an epoxy. This was kind of a fun little project. You know these cross cut lumber log slice decor pieces are gonna make like a, a really cool woodsy feel to to the baby shower that we're trying to create. Not only can you use these things for a centerpiece on a table, but you can take some wood glue on one of these smaller sections and then take a wider one, set it right on top of there to create like a multi-level uh, cake stand or something. If you did seal this with an oil, you could use it as a cutting board. I've seen some people cut this center section out and then they'll drop like a vase or something inside there that can hold water and then they can put like flowers. Another thing is instead of cutting this flat, you could leave it at an angle and then cut like a slot in there and you can use it as a, a business card or a little sign or some kind of placard that goes across here to display. Another thing you can do is put some felt underneath and then use them as like trivets for cooking. That would be cool. You could put one of those 
fancy little white paper doilies on top of here like you see at grandma's house for candy dishes. If you had some smaller branches, you could drill a hole and then tie some twine on there and hang them like little ornaments, give them as gifts, that kind of thing. So there's just a lot that you can do with these things. They're pretty cool. Well, that just about covers everything. Let me know if I left anything out and if you guys have any comments or ideas on other ways that you could possibly do it or any great ways of sealing these things, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.